And we are back with Kathy, our student financial aid expert, and she is answering your questions about student loans and debt. So the next question that we have from viewers, how do I find out the status of my student forgiveness application? So my recommendation with regard to uh, anyone who's applied for student loan forgiveness, who's qualified for some of the current programs that are out there, is you should check your studentaid.gov account. Uh, you should have a dashboard uh, on that account to let you know the status of anything. Also, uh, contact your servicer. Uh, they should also have information about the status of any uh, public service loan forgiveness applications or teacher loan forgiveness applications as well. Uh, that's probably uh, the best resource for you to find out the status. What do I do with my loans that are private loans, not government loans? So with regard to private loans, you really need to look at the provisions that were part of that loan uh, when you took it out. Uh, you may want to contact your lender uh, to see what your options are, particularly if you're having any trouble with repayment to see if there's some way you could negotiate a lower payment. Uh, but those are really up to the lender uh, to decide if, whether or not you have any options on adjusting your repayment. Okay, so this one's a little bit more personal as well. If your step parent refuses to give you information, will you be denied assistance? So it really depends on your situation. A new thing that has happened with the 2425 FAFSA is students whose parents are divorced are going to provide information about the parent that provides the most support. Uh, so that could be the parent that they live with or it could be the parent um, that is not uh, that they're not living with. So uh, with that in mind, um, you know, there could be a step parent in the picture. If um, the parent that provides the most support is remarried and there is a step parent, uh, they will need to provide information about both the parent and the step parent to be eligible for federal financial aid. Okay, so our next question, what year of high school should you start doing all this? So you can't complete the FAFSA until you're a senior if you plan to go the following year. So students who are seniors right now uh, should uh, start completing the FAFSA for 24-25. Having said that though, I do recommend that students start looking and planning for post-secondary education for college and uh, trade schools and uh, any university that they plan to attend as soon as they can because they want to choose um, their career field and choose a school that's appropriate for that career field that they're interested in, start saving for college, applying for scholarships. You don't have to wait till you're, you're a senior in order to apply for scholarships. Also, one of the great things about the FAFSA now is because they use prior prior year, uh, a student who is a junior and has a good idea of what their family income is can use the financial aid estimator on studentaid.gov to get an idea of whether or not they're going to qualify for any need-based aid, and that can help them plan and select a school, college, or university that's really affordable for them. I think that's advice. We got about 20 seconds here. Is there a quick piece of advice you'd give to parents right now? Uh, my advice is to uh, take their time with the FAFSA. They don't have to rush to complete it, but do be aware of any priority deadlines at schools, colleges, and universities to make sure that they get that FAFSA in prior to that priority deadline. Amazing. Well, we appreciate you being here. And if you missed anything, you can find it on the Two Wants to Know section on our website.